what the hell? Something's wrong. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. All hope you're having a terrific day. As you guys saw in the previous clip, something happened to the prelude. An upper or lower heater hose ruptured. As I was just driving home, luckily, I was just literally pulling up the driveway, putting the car in the backyard and um, started seeing smoke pouring out of the engine bay, which I thought was smoke, but it was just steam from coolant. So I had to get hot water and pour it all over my boiling hot engine. Don't use cold water on a hot motor, guys. It's not a good idea. Um, if you do not get the cooling off almost before it dries, it's almost impossible to get all these little white dots and marks all off your engine bay. It can really make a mess of things and it's almost impossible to clean off. So take my advice, clean it off straight away. Um, if you have to use cold water, just um, trinkle it on very carefully. Don't just throw a whole bucket of cold water on a boiling hot engine it's not a good idea anyway we're gonna get straight into this and try and fix this problem today and I'm gonna show you how I go about it okay guys I'm gonna replace my heater hose that is located underneath the uh, distributor here this hose to be exact right here it's got coolant running through it that's your heater hose it goes all the way back down there. You can just take off your aftermarket air intake. But for me, I'm just going to leave this on, which is going to make my job a little bit more harder. My radiator hose ruptured just here. It popped a hole open right there. When I was out driving it, I pulled it over all sudden because there was steam coming out the engine bay and it looked like smoke but it was steam from all the coolant spewing out of the um, heater, upper heater hose right here. So I took this off, I cut the bad end off, as you can see it's got the, the clamp marks around the hose and as you can see it's where it popped open and coolant was just spewing out of here basically making a really bad mess in the engine bay. We have to replace the entire hose. It's really hard to replace the OEM hose from Honda, so apparently they don't really manufacture these anymore. So I had to make do with an aftermarket one. That's what we'll be working with today to get us out of this jam. Because knowing that I cut the bad section off that burst, that ruptured, you're better off replacing the hose because obviously the hose is no good being 22 years old, um, I think it's done more than its fair share of time. So we're going to change that today. There is another one located underneath your intake manifold that's underneath, which you can kind of see it when the car's jacked up, but I'm not going to do that today. We're going to take one step at a time and we're going to take care of the one that's giving me the most problem at this current time. So this is the aftermarket hose I'll be using. It's got a slight kink in it. I'll just put some vice grips with a couple of pegs, one on top, one underneath, so I don't damage the hose and clamp it shut because when I disengage the hose from the block, coolant is gonna come pouring out of there and I need to get this on the end of that as fast as I can so I can minimize the mess and put the clamp on and leave this on there until we can work out how much length I actually need before I put this other end on the heater valve opening so for hose clamps I'll be using 18 to 25 millimeter clamps should do the job for me 
This is the hose right here, which goes underneath. I don't know if you can see. Here it is there, it's where we have to get to. So once we tackle the one from the block, and I'll jam the new one on there, coolant's gonna start pouring out of there. And I'll show you that not while I um, take this hose off and try and squeeze the other one on without making too much of a mess. Oh, hopefully I'm successful with this because if I don't get this new hose on, Corn's going to come pouring out constantly and I'm going to be in a heap of trouble. I think I need to get rid of that clamp a little bit more. Hopefully I can get this hose on there without no trouble. Let's get this one off. Here it comes. new hose and stick it on there as quick as I can. Hopefully it's not going to be too hard. Oh god. Oh shit. There we go, got it. <laughs> it wasn't too bad. That's one side. See why I put the G clamp on there? To stop the coolant from pouring out. Because I haven't got the other end connected yet. I wish I had a longer ratchet extension, but I don't, so this is as far as I can get in. Alright All right, guys, now when you got the old hose off, there'll be this rubber piece that of hose that goes slides over it like so just take that off all right and put it on your new one so this is sort of like a protector for when you're leaning it on top of the other radiator hose it's just a it's kind of like a spacer but also just it's just to protect it so don't forget about that it should be on there if it's OEM it should have this on there might as well pre degrees the area. It's nothing worse than when coolant dries. It's a nightmare trying to remove it. As you can see, that is your heater valve right there. This is the other end I have to work with. It's pretty much right underneath your um, your intake's throttle body. That's probably the most toughest part to get to. I'm virtually squeezing my arm down here. This is why it's good to have your, your intake off. So you don't have the sort of dramas that I'm going through right now. Just to make a video for you guys. Just to give you an understanding of how much work there is. Surprise coolant comes out of here too. A little bit well. Oops, there you go. Here's the rest of it. Make sure you have your your heater off because if your heater's open when you shut the car off, this valve will be open and coolant will just be pouring out of your heater. So just to minimize the mess, make sure your heater's off, guys, before you shut your car off. Guys, there's the old heater hose. That's out of the way. That was the bad end. Well, pretty much the whole hose is no longer good. Now, time to cut the excess length off. Once you've measured how much hose you need to cut, I know it's about here. Label is, but it's not too bad because it gives me kind of a go. Cut it. Are you happy with it? 
As you can see, I've got the vice grip still on there to keep the, uh, the coolant from pouring out. I'll give you a quick tip, guys. Just get some oil. Put a little bit on your finger. Put some oil on the end here, with your finger. It'll make it a lot easier to get that hose on. It's just a bit of lubrication. Hopefully we can just wiggle it on there. Come on, you little bastard. Yeah. See why I told you to put oil on the end of that? It makes it easier to get on there with less dramas. Now to position this clamp, tighten it down and take the vice grips off. Once you're happy with everything, just um, get your vice grips and open them and there we go, the coolant goes through. Well, the car's fired up. I've got it to operating temperatures. As you guys can see, it's not leaking. And by the looks of it, it doesn't look like it's leaking. So I'm, quite, I'm pretty happy with that. Another job well done. Well, it's starting to get dark. We might have time for a quick test drive and go to the car wash quickly. But yeah, thank you for your continued love and support. And um, by all means, guys, like, comment, subscribe. See you next time.